salam un salam peaceful 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 peace peaceful 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 peace على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم مولاي صل وسلم دائما ابدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كلهم The heart of a human being can change very quickly the man sleeps at night as a believer. He wakes up in the morning as a disbeliever. That's why the Prophet وسلم, taught us to cry to Allah all the time to keep our hearts steady and firm upon the truth. Verily, Allah does neither look to your forms nor to your bodies, but He looks to your hearts and your works. All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him with all His beautiful names. I welcome you all to this lecture by Sheikh Salim al Amri, UAE, on the topic, Actions of the Heart. He had studied under the major students of Sheikh Nasiruddin al-Albani. Without wasting much time, I'd like to request uh, Sheikh Salim to deliver his speech. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah rahman rahim إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار brothers and sisters in Islam our topic is about the actions of the heart the actions of the heart this little organ that many of us neglected it completely. And we, you hardly find people, they talk about it. We hardly ask one another, how's your heart? We hardly ask one another, how's your Iman brother? This little organ in the size of one's fist, the Prophet Wasallam says, that this organ, if it is whole, if it is healthy, then the rest of the organs will be the same. But if it is corrupt, then the rest will follow. So today, we want to talk about this little organ that which Allah created. And what we know about it, that it is only a mechanism or a device that pumps the blood around the body, period, full stop. But that is not the case, brothers and sisters. The name of the heart in Arabic language is called Qalb. Prophet ﷺ tells us why this little organ is called Qalb. Why we call it Qalb? He says, وسلم, verily, the heart was named so because of its frequent changing. Certainly the likeness of the heart is like a, a feather that is stuck at the root of a tree. And this feather is turned upside down when the wind blows. It's like this. This is the feather, very light. And this feather is attached to the root of a tree. The slight blow of wind turns it upside down. The heart is like that. That means the states of the heart changes. Today you love someone, tomorrow you hate him. Today 
you are a believer the second day you are a disbeliever and this will come towards the end of time the Prophet ﷺ said the man sleeps at night as a believer he wakes up in the morning as a disbeliever the heart's changing the heart of a human being can change very quickly that's why the Prophet ﷺ taught us to cry to Allah all the time to keep our hearts steady and firm upon the truth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says upon the tongue of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, وَلَا تُخْزِنِي يَوْمَ يُبْعَثُونَ يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Ibrahim alayhi salam has cried to Allah, prayed to Allah, invoked Allah. Oh Allah, disgrace me not on the day you resurrect them, you raise them. The father of Ibrahim will be in the hellfire in the form of male hyena, transformed into a male hyena. So Ibrahim cried to Allah, Oh Allah, Disgrace me not on the day you will raise them. يَوْمَ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ On the day that neither wealth nor children will be helpful. No one on that day will help you. Neither money nor your children. Your salvation is completely dependent upon your work, upon your righteousness in this life. If you didn't work hard for your salvation and the other life, you will be destined to hell. So that's why you need to work hard here in this life. إِلَّا مَنْ أَتَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ Then Ibrahim said, except he who turns to Allah with a pure, clean heart. Again, only those who have pure, clean, healthy hearts will prosper and succeed. Before we start mentioning and listing what are the functions or the tasks or the acts or the actions of the heart, I would like to also mention the causes behind the sickness of the heart. The hearts, they get sick. The hearts also, they get sick. Not only they get sick, they also get blind. Among these causes, number one, that makes the heart sick is sinning, sinfulness, disobeying Allah, committing haram. If you are disobeying Allah, committing haram, don't expect yourself to have a pure heart. Don't expect yourself to have a state of peace and tranquility within yourself. You will not feel that. You will have depression, anxiety, insecurity, instead of peace. Why? Look into yourself, ask yourself. So sinfulness is one of the root causes of the sickness of the heart. Second thing, selfishness. Being a slave for yourself. What your nafs, what yourself asks, you are a slave and servant for this nafs. You can't overcome your desires. So that's also another cause. The third cause is deserting the study circles, the ilm. When you leave the ilm and you live in ignorance and jahal, your heart will get sick. The ilm is a cure for the heart, is a light. Knowledge is light. Innama yakhsha Allah min ibadihi al-ulama. Verily, the men of knowledge are the ones who fear Allah most. The men of knowledge are the ones who fear Allah most. Among also the root causes of this sickness of the heart is love of dunya. That this dunya becomes our objective. We are completely complacent, content, happy with the dunya. So what is there preoccupying our minds and makes us busy all the time is the dunya. We wake up and sleep, wake up and sleep thinking only about the dunya. Throughout the 24 hours, only engage in the dunya, busy with the dunya, and unaware of the real life. 
So that contributes to the sickness of the heart. Also, so this extreme love for the dunya contributes to the sickness and make the heart sick. Having said this, brothers and sisters, now we'll start mentioning the actions of the heart. The Prophet وسلم, says in Sahih Imam Muslim, Verily, Allah does neither look to your forms nor to your bodies, but He looks to your hearts and your works, to your hearts and your deeds. So Allah looks. He doesn't look to your skin complexion or your stature, your form, tall, short, no. Allah looks to your heart. What is there in this heart? Arrogance, pride, jealousy, envy, all these ills. He looks to that heart. What is inside? And also your deeds. Are you doing evil deeds or righteous deeds? Is this clear to everyone? Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu said, the heart is the king. And the rest of the body, organs, are his soldiers. So if the king is upright, then the organs will be the same. And when the king is corrupt, the rest will be corrupt. So this parable, Abu Huraira is giving us this parable, this similitude, like a king and his subordinates. So if the king, the head is corrupt, what do you expect those below him? They will be corrupt. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam preached La ilaha illallah And many are the miracles that he has been given Really we can talk hours and hours about the number of miracles They don't number in the hundreds, they number in the thousands But his greatest miracle was the miracle of the Quran Ever used to worship Allah Azza wa Jal Then Allah is Al Hay, the ever living Who never dies Fundamentals of Faith that all Muslims believe in the one and same Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All Muslims believe in the final and same messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Quran, it is the last revelation of Allah. Allah himself said, right, I'll take care of preserving myself. I would not entrust it to anyone. Dr. Jamal Badavi. A day when no wealth or children would be of any help except those who come to Allah with a clean heart. Because after all, we came from the dust and to dust we are returning. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abu Zar, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to me, don't consider any good thing insignificant, even if it were that you meet your brother with smiling face. Sahih Muslim, Volume 4, Book of Virtues, Good Manners, and Joining of the Ties of Relationships, Chapter 1093, Hadith number 6359. But if he's an example, an upright, then the rest will follow him and take him as an example. The meanings of heart in Arabic, qalb, what to say the meaning of heart? What's the meaning? Uh, what we call it? Heart, qalb. Qalb. So what's the meaning of qalb in the Arabic language? The best part of anything, we call it qalb. So the core, the core of anything, the kernel of anything, the core of anything is called qalb. Because normally the core or the kernel is the best thing. So that's called qalb. Also qalb means, see now, qalabtul waraqa. To overturn. So uh, the kalb also called, it is called kalb because that's the best organ in your body. True or not? If it stops, finish. That's the end of your life. Heart attack. So it's the best in your body. Second thing, it also keeps what? Changing. 
It keeps changing its state. That's just like overturning. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created this heart. He says, فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَبْصَارِ وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي الصُّدُورِ Which means, truly it is not their eyes that are blind, but their hearts which are in their breasts. Surah 22, Ayah 46. So Allah is saying, truly not their eyes that are blind, but their hearts are blind. So there is heart blindness. And bear in mind, who is talking? Who is speaking? The creator. Don't forget that. So the one who created the heart says that the heart also becomes blind. The types of heart. Hearts are categorized. Al-qalbu salim pure heart. There are hearts that are pure. May Allah make our, our hearts pure. I mean, pure hearts. They don't have this malice, grudge, rancor, all this. No. Pure heart. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Brothers and sisters, I'm advising myself and yourself, and you too, that when you go to sleep, reset the heart. You know the counter? You reset it to zero. I want you, you reset your heart every night. Clear your heart. Don't hold any grudge or malice or rancor against any Muslim. Say, oh Allah, I forgave all my brothers and sisters. Because you don't know, maybe you will never be able to wake up the next day. You will die. So do you want to die while holding many things in your heart? That's how you will be resurrected on that day. Having years of plans of revenge. You want to revenge. The Prophet ﷺ said, A man now will enter upon us. He is from among the people of Jannah. He was sitting with the Sahaba. He said, now a man will come. This man, is all, he will be among the inhabitants. He will go to the Jannah. And all of a sudden, this companion entered, and his beard was wet, just performed his wudu. And he said this three times, and it happened to be the same companion. Then one of the companions, the youngs among the Sahaba, went to him and said, Uncle, I want to be your guest for three days. He said, you're most welcome. And he stayed in the house of this man for three days, and he didn't see anything abnormal. In the sense, he's not praying most of the night. Nothing, just like us. He said, Uncle, the reason I told you that I want to be your guest, the Prophet told us this, so tell me what is the secret. I haven't seen anything that we don't do that you do, or that you do that we don't do. He said, listen, son, I don't do much, but when I go to bed, I forgive all Muslims. Don't hold anything in my heart. These are the pure hearts. The second type is the al-qalbul mayyid, dead heart. Some hearts are dead. And the owner of this heart, he does not know his creator. Imagine someone, he doesn't know his creator. He doesn't know his Lord. He doesn't know why he is in this life. If I ask him, what is the purpose of this pen? He say to write. What's the purpose of this watch? To tell me time. What's the purpose of this shirt? To cover my nakedness. What is the purpose of your pair of shoes to protect my feet. What is your purpose in life? Nothing. The pair of shoes, they have a purpose, and you don't. The pair of shoes more important than yourself. Imagine a human being, he doesn't know why he is in this life. Do you think in this life, just you came like that? No. You are created for a purpose. And you have to fulfill your mission in this life. So many people, they don't want to know. That's why the Quran said, those, they are worse than the animals. They are worse than the cattle. The cattle in the field, they know their creator. 
the battle in the field, they know the creator. And you don't know your creator? And he might tell you, my creator is mother nature. And we tell him, listen, what is mother nature? Don't you know? Mother nature is nothing more than inanimate plants and animals. This is mother nature. Look around yourself and see what surrounds you. You will be surrounded by inanimates. That means non-living things. Trees, mountains, oceans, non-living things, inanimates. Plants, animals, human beings. We ask you, which is the least complex and who is the most complex? You will find inanimate, plant, animals, human beings. True or not? And you find the inanimate, the soil, serves the plant, serves the, the animal, serves the human being. So all these things are made for you to serve you. Who made them subservient to you to serve you? Who made that? You yourself. Allah made the elephant so tamed. The little child will lead that elephant. Who made it? You. If you made the elephant so tamed, then why can't you make the scorpion also so tamed? The scorpion, little small insect. Can you tame the scorpion? It will bite you. So it is the creator who made this elephant tame and this creature so poisonous and you cannot bring it under your control. And that is mother nature. All these things are below you. How you lower yourself, oh mankind, and you say mother nature created me. You have intelligence. Mother nature doesn't have intelligence. How did mother nature give you intelligence when it doesn't have it? So it is Allah, the creator, who created you. So people who say these things, they have dead hearts. They don't know Allah. They don't know the creator. They don't know the reason they are here for. And the third type of heart is sick heart. And this heart that is sick, the sick hearts, why they get sick? Because of committing the haram. Now, the things that affect the heart. Destroy the heart. Number one, brothers and sisters, is too much mingling with people. You're always mingling with the people, mixing with the people to the extent you have no time to sit by yourself. At least a Muslim should sit with him by himself on daily basis for half an hour at least. Before you go to sleep, you sit alone and ask yourself. This is self-analysis, self-inventory. Ask yourself, what did I do today? The good deeds, you say, Alhamdulillah. If you made mistake, ask forgiveness on daily basis. So if you don't make allocate time for self-inventory, your heart will get sick. Second thing, being unrealistic. You just keep living in the world of fantasy. Many people live in fantasy. They are not here in this life. They're just always living in another world, fantasizing. For instance, inshallah, I will be a good Muslim when I become old man. Or after marriage. Or after doing hajj. This person is dreaming as if he has a guarantee that he will live until that time. You can die anytime, man. Wake up. Go to the graveyard and see the graves. How old is he? Five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. Young men are dying. Do you think you will live until you? Not only this, many people, they carry on fantasizing, deceiving themselves. When they are already on the verge of the grave, they have gray hair, huh? like me. The gray hair, this is a sign, indication. And you find still, he is dreaming. Don't you know that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the span of my ummah is from 60 to 70. That's the average. If you are now 50, let's say that you will live up to 60. You have only 10 years remain. That's it. Nothing more. So do something. Wake up. If you are 60, now if something, it's only bonus. Okay? You should expect the visitor any time. The visitor, the death, any time will knock your door. 
It's over. Oh, I'm not ready. No way. So that's what destroys your heart. Procrastination tomorrow, 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 and tomorrow never comes. You keep procrastinating. I'll do it later. I'll do this. That is from the shaitan. Also among the things that weakens, makes the heart weak, is to rely upon other than Allah. To have tawakkul not on Allah. You don't trust Allah. You don't rely on Allah. You don't depend on Allah. You depend upon other than Allah. Then, if you depend upon other than Allah and rely upon other than Allah, then this heart will be sick heart. You know, if you want your heart to remain firm, put your trust in Allah. Then you will not fear anyone but Allah. Living the faith in the spirit of Islam. There are three reasons why we commit sin. What is this sin? If you are looking around any woman in the street, you will be suffering, man. You will be suffering. Because of the sins, they were drowned in the blood. The sins in Arabic are called ma'asi, dunur, isuk, and asyan. He commands the volcano erupt now. The volcano will erupt. Because what is more important to you is your is Lord. Your Lord. How do we define which practices are Islamic and which are not? How do we know which aspect of culture common among Muslims is indeed Islamic and which ones are not? Personal hygiene, cleanliness, hospitality, charity, the sense of the family, the sense of community, cultural practices that exist among Muslims that are contrary to the teaching of Islam. Some people are not aware of that and in some instances even they may think they are based on Islam. Also among the things that weakens, makes the heart weak, is to rely upon other than Allah. To have tawakkul not on Allah. You don't trust Allah. You don't rely on Allah. You don't depend on Allah. You depend upon other than Allah. Then, if you depend upon other than Allah and rely upon other than Allah, then this heart will be sick heart you know if you want your heart to remain firm put your trust in Allah then you will not fear anyone but Allah read in the Quran the Quran tells us that when, you know, Musa alayhi salam, he took the Israelites, Benu Israel, from Egypt. And then the king of Egypt, the Pharaoh, and his troops followed them. When the day, by the, when the day started to break, the troops of the Pharaoh behind the Musa and his people, and the sea in front of them, so they are sandwiched. There's no way to escape, true or not. So the people of Musa said, Oh Musa, we are finished. We'll be taken, we'll be captured. Musa said, Nay, no way. They cannot catch us. What are you talking? They're behind us. He said, No way. Kalla, nay. Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. Verily, I have my Lord with me. I have Allah with me. He's the one who's going to save me. And what happened? 
hit the sea with your stick and staff. And what happened? And the sea split. This is the tawakkul. When the heart relies upon Allah, nothing shakes it. Nothing. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he migrated from Mecca to Medina, and the mushriks, they made a prize. Whoever brings Muhammad dead or alive, 100 she camel. And one guy who's an expert in reading the footprints followed them. His name was Suraq ibn Malik. And he followed the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Bakr Siddiq said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, someone is after us. He said, don't worry. And what happened? The land was so rocky. It's a rocky land. It's not more land, rocky land. And the four, the two hands and the two legs of the horse sank into the rocky land. So the horse fell down. The rider also fell off. And then he jumped. And he tried to do this to follow the Prophet and to catch the Prophet. And it happened to him three times. Then the Prophet Sallallahu turned to him, said, Suraqa, don't waste your time. You cannot catch us. Allah is our protector. Don't waste time. But I will tell you something, Suraqa. Go back and I will promise you to give you the bangles, the bracelets of the king of Persia. Can you imagine the Prophet Sallallahu is chased, wanted, and he's promising the bangles, the bracelets of the emperor of Persia? And the years passed and Islam spread and Suraqa became a Muslim. And during the Khilafah, the reign of Umar ibn Khattab, the Muslims took Persia and they brought the bangles, the bracelets of the king of Persia, the emperor. And Umar ibn Khattab said, where is Suraq ibn Malik? Stand up, give me your hands. This is what the prophet promised you. So this is the tawakkul. He's telling him, go. You cannot do anything to us. Because we were just in the cave and you couldn't see us in the cave. And by the way, brothers and sisters, when they were in the cave, there was no web spider. Huh? There was no web spider. There was no uh, pigeon, nothing. It is the power of Allah who protected them. The cave was open. Nothing is there. As Abu Bakr said, if one just did like this, he will be able to see us. The prophet told him, don't worry. They will not be see us. They will not be able to see us because Allah is protecting us. Also, what sickens and what will make the heart sick is too much of eating. You eat too much. If you eat too much, you will sleep too much. And if you sleep too much, you will miss a lot. You will miss good deeds, many things. The actions of the heart. The first thing among the actions of the heart is learning and understanding. You learn by your heart and you understand by your heart. As Allah said, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا أَوْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا Do they not travel through the land so that their hearts may thus learn wisdom? Their hearts learn wisdom and their ears may thus learn to hear. So the hearts they learn. The heart learns. As just the heart gets blind, the heart learns as well. Among the actions of the heart, brothers and sisters, is love. How do you love someone? By your ear? Uh, your tongue? By which of the five senses? No. By your heart. That's why we see the teenagers' hearts, hearts everywhere, right? And on Valentine's Day, huh? Valentine's Day is the day of the hearts. Pink, pink, everyone is pink. Hearts. And your hearts, you see the arrow through the heart, right? That is, they call it Cupid arrow. So, people, they laugh by their hearts. And you feel the pain in your heart, right? Have you experienced that, brothers? I'm sure many of you, those who loved, they experienced that pain in their hearts, right? Mm. So, 
You love by your heart. So that is also one of the acts of the heart. Also among the actions of the heart is hatred. This heart, you love and you hate. You say, Ya Akhi, I hate him. I don't like him. You hate with what? With your heart. Also, among the actions of the heart is humbleness. You become humble. Humility. As Allah says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنَا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا Which means, and the servants of Allah, most gracious, are those who walk on earth in humility, in humbleness. And when the ignorant, the fools address them, they say, peace, salam, salam. You find the people of knowledge, the ulama, are humble people. Very humble. And we've seen them with our eyes. If you see him walking in the street, you will not say this is alim or allama, humble, simple person. But when he talks, the pearls come out. But if you see him in the street, he's a very normal person, humble person. That is the real alim. That's the real person of knowledge. And you'll find the ignorant, he walks. His head is up, his nose in the sky, arrogant, because his head is empty. Nothing in there. That's why his arrogance. There is a saying in the Arabic language that they say, don't you see that the ear of corn, you know maize, corn, the ear when it is full of grains, it is up or down? Down, heavy, full of grains, so it's down to earth. When it is empty, on top. So those people of knowledge are full of knowledge. That's why they are down to earth, humble people. So humbleness is also among the acts of the heart, that you're a humble person. If you are arrogant, proud, you will never enter the Jannah. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, لا يدخل الجنة متكبر. A proud person, arrogant person, will never enter the Jannah. So if you want to enter the Jannah, you should humble yourself. Among the acts of the hearts also arrogance. You become arrogant by your heart. You look upon the people like this, from top, disdainfully. That is also among the actions of the heart. Among the actions of the heart, brothers and sisters, humbleness, uh, submissiveness, that you submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِيمَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُ فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتُ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا Which means in English, Allah swearing. Allah swears by himself. فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ By your Lord, they believe not. Unless and until they make you judge between them in all their disputes. Then they find no opposition or resistance or hatred for your decision. And they surrender in submission. They submit to Allah. A friendly message by Dr. Zakir. Way to salvation. The way to salvation has been prescribed the glorious Quran in Surah Al-As chapter number 103 verse number 1 to 3 Wal As by time Inna al-insana lafi khusr Indeed, mankind is in loss Illa al-lazina amanu except those who have believed Wa amilu salihat and done righteous deeds Wa tawasaw bil haq and advised each other to truth. What was our sabr? And advised each other to patience. There are minimum four criteria required for any human being to enter Jannah, that is paradise. These are Iman, that is faith. Amr salihat, that is righteous deed. What was our bil haq? That is advising each other to truth, that is. Islam, calling people to submit to God and 
Watawaso be sabr, advising each other to patience. Its significance has been emphasized by Imam Shafi, who said, if people were to ponder on the surah, it would have been sufficient for their salvation. Peace TV, the solution for humanity. تمام علوم میں چوٹی کا علم قرآن کا علم حقیقی مومن کے لیے رسول کا فرمانا بھی ایسے ہی ہے جیسے کہ اللہ کا فرمانا انفرادی ہدایت بھی قرآن میں ہے اور سب سے بڑھتا ہے اجتماعی ہدایت جس کی آج کے انسان کو سب سے زیادہ ضرورت ہے اس شخص کا قرآن پر کوئی ایمان نہیں ہے تو اس کی حرام کردہ چیز کو اپنے لیے حلال ٹھہر دیں جو اس قرآن کی طرف لوگوں کو بلائے گا کسی اور کو ہدایت ہونا ہو اس کی ہدایت ہو گئی راہ ہدایت وہی معتبر ہوگی جو کامل اطاعت کے ساتھ انتہائی شدید محمد کے ساتھ اس ملک کا نظام باطل ہے اس ملک کا نظام تاغوتی ہے اللہ سے بغاوت پر مبنی ہے اللہ کی شریعت کئی نافذ نہیں ہے اللہ کی حاکمیت کی نفی ہے سب سے بہترین نظام اپنے وقت کو ریلیس کیجئے اپنی قوتوں کو ریلیس کیجئے اور یہ وقت اور قوت کھپا دیجئے باطل نظام کو ختم کر کے اس کی جگہ حق کا نظام قائم کر دیں رب کا نظام سو You will not become a true believer and a true Muslim unless you submit to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and unless and until you accept whatever the Prophet sallallahu says. Many people, many Muslims, you tell him Prophet Muhammad says this, he tells you, is this in the Quran? Have you heard them? He tells you, is this in the Quran? You tell him Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said this, Akhi, is it in the Quran? As if... What Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says is something insignificant, and then you ask him, brother, do you believe that he is Rasulullah? Yes, I do. No, you don't. How you say that he is Allah's messenger, and then he tells you you don't listen to him? Come on, wake up. If you say that he is Rasulullah, then you sh you are obliged to listen to him and to accept whatever he tells you. Because he is Rasulullah. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, you know, on the night of the Mi'raj, night of ascension, when he went and came back, and he was narrating to the mushriks, Abu Jahl passed by Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was not there, radiallahu anhu. He said, Abu Bakr, do you know what your friend is saying? He said, Abu Bakr, what did he say? He said that he went last night to Jerusalem and he came back. Abu Bakr, without hesitation, he said, Laqad Sadaq, he said the truth. He tells me that the news comes to him with, within seconds, I accept. If he says that he went overnight, why shouldn't I accept? He's Rasulullah. That's why he's Siddiq. So whatever the Prophet ﷺ says, finish. You accept. He tells you, plus that the Quran commands us to take whatever the Prophet ﷺ tells us to do. Conviction. The conviction is always where? In the heart. You become convinced that is the function, that is one of the actions of the heart. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Rabbi arini kayfa tuhi al mawta. Ibrahim said, Oh Allah, let me see how you give life to the dead. How you give life to the dead. Allah said, Awalam to Umin, haven't you believed? He said, Yes, I believe. I want, I want more certainty. I want to see how you give life to the dead. Allah told him, Take four birds and cut them into pieces and mix them and then distribute them upon the mountains around you. And then you call them. Imagine now Ibrahim cutting the birds and then he's distributing the flesh of the birds on the mountains and then he say to the birds, come! And the birds came flapping their wings. I'm asking the question now, will the conviction before equal to the conviction after or stronger? It will be stronger before or after? After, definitely. 
Because now he saw with his own eyes how Allah gave life to the dead. So the conviction even in the heart will be increased and strengthened when you see things that are happening in front of your eyes. So the conviction is one of the actions of the heart. And if Ibrahim salam asked for a proof to Allah, then we can ask the scholars for evidence, right? If the Mawlawi is saying, you do this thing, I say, Sheikh, if you don't mind, may I know the evidence? May I know why I should do this? He should not get angry, the Mawlawi. He said, yes, son. Allah said this. The Prophet Sallallahu said this. Say, Barakallah Veek. He should not say, you don't trust me? He said, no, I trust you. But I want something just to give more conviction. I want something to give me more yaqeen, more certainty that what I'm doing is correct. The fear also, where? The heart. When you start to fear something, when you start to feel afraid, the first thing, the heart will feel it. Boom, 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 right? That's how heart starts beating and the pulse increases. And then, whoosh, you start running away, right? Because something scary. So the heart will start, the pulse of the heart and the beats of the heart will start to accelerate. And then the rest of the organs will follow because he's the king. As long as the heart is calm, Musa, the heart is calm. Prophet Muhammad, the heart is calm. Nothing happened. The moment the heart starts to tremble, the rest will start to shiver. Hope is also the action of the heart. Tawakkul is also the action of the heart. Sabr is also the action of the heart. All these are actions of the heart. Sabr, bravery and courage, also the action of the heart. If this heart is calm, you will never fear anyone. So the courage, bravery, also among the actions of the heart. Cowardice, the heart. Homage, khushu', the heart. And the yaqeen, also the heart. May Allah Azza wa Jal strengthen our heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala purify our hearts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unify and unite our hearts upon the truth. And may Allah reward all of you brothers and sisters for your patience and attendance. Barakallah feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. Now we have question and answer session. Please uh, restrict the questions to the topic, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Muhammad Tahir. I'd like to ask a question. In, you just gave an explanation about the heart. In Arabic, it's called khalb. But the heart, as we know, in the medical terms, is just a pumping machine which pumps the blood to the body. The, how does it, uh, how do you relate it to the thinking and feeling mechanism? Like we have the thinking and the feeling in the brain. When we describe, the, almost all languages describe the heart as the where we feel. But the heart, medical terms, is only just a machine, pumping machine. How does this? Jazakallah uh... khair. This is what I said at the beginning. I said, we don't know anything about it except that it is a machine. Whereas the creator who made it is saying it's not only a machine. It has other functions, this heart. And I read an article a long time ago about heart transplant. The doctor who made the heart transplant said, I have noticed that the person after the operation was speaking and mentioning names. So I called his family and I said, do you know these names that he's mentioning? He said, no. Are these names his friends? He said, no. Then he said, I decided to call the family of the owner of this heart. Because this heart belonged to someone who passed away. So he brought the family and he asked them, 
Do you know these names? They say, yes, they are the friends of our son. These are his friends, the names he's mentioning. So our knowledge about many things in our body is not discovered yet. There's a lot of mystery about this body. The doctors, when we ask them, what is the role of the appendix? You're a doctor, right? aren't you? Any doctor here? Any doctor? No one? Yes. What's the role of the appendix in the body? They tell you, this is something additional. That's why we can remove it. There's nothing additional. Don't say it has nothing because you don't know. A time will come when people will discover. There is nothing in God Almighty created just like that. Everything has a purpose to serve. Just because of our limited knowledge, we should not say it is something useless. It has no purpose. So our knowledge about ourselves is limited. And we have to admit that. But the problem is the nature of man is arrogant. He thinks that he understands everything when he doesn't. I'm sure many of you have noticed this in his lifetime. How many medicines you used to know many years ago, now they are not in the market anymore. Many medicines, right? After a few years, they said, oh, this medicine is, is not good. Remove it after killing many people. <laughs> after many people died, now that we realize this medicine is bad. Any medicine, open and read the prescription, you will find side effects. What does it mean, side effects? They tell you, yes, it might help you here, but it might cause other damage, something else. I read an article in a newspaper, local newspaper. In Australia, they hunt foxes, the foxes. They hunt them because of their skin. They sell the skin of the fox, the fur. So they sell the fur, but in Australia there was a problem. There were wolves, and the wolves, they eat the foxes. So the Australian decided to kill the wolves, so the foxes will be safe. But to their surprise, they found out that the quality of the fur become bad, became bad. That pluffiness and smoothness is not there. So they made a research. And then they found out that when the fox is frightened, scared, and chased, it starts setting gland, secretes certain substances. And that substance is responsible of giving this fluffiness and smoothness. Then they said, let us bring the wolves again. So man doesn't know. He thinks he knows, he doesn't know. Look to the field of agriculture, using the chemicals. They started affecting the soil, right? Now the trend, they say, no, 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 no. You should not use chemicals. Huh? Use our old method, the manure, and huh? that's the best way. Don't use chemicals. Culture the insects in the laboratories and put the insects in the field. Let everything natural as Allah created. Jazakallah khair. Subhanakallah. Huma bihamdika wa shadan la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa tubi ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum. Oh, 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 oh.